Sugar, this here is Lenore Zan, and you're watching Fandoms. And welcome to Fandoms. Uh, my name is Tony. I am the host and founder of Nerd Initiative. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to be talking about a lot of things Marvel this evening. Um, and joining with me um, with their screen turned off at the moment. Uh, there we go. Is, I, oh, there we go. What, what are you doing? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm are, you playing with, are you playing with my controls? Uh, yeah, you... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought I was supposed to turn myself on. Um, I was just going to say, I'm, I'm, I apologize for having my camera off. I thought... I'm I'm not accustomed to to actually being on this soon. Usually the show kicks off and then there's you introduce a clip and then and then you know what I'm saying? I, I apologize. Well, that's okay. I was trying to be a little bit more fluid, but that's all right. That's my problem. Um, but of course, with me as always um, is of course Will Wilkins, my co-host. He's also the host of Netheads, um, and of course, it says they're the Robert, Robot Whisperer, which I, I think is highly Excellent. appropriate. If you haven't seen his TikTok recently, uh, Will just celebrated his birthday. Happy birthday, Will! Thank and you. on top of that, he had his emos, his army of emos, uh, wish him a happy birthday. Uh, which was cute and creepy at the same time. And um, yeah, but before I guess we go any further, uh, let's go ahead and jump into a clip uh, so we don't have to be seen. So take it away, Pooja. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another segment of Pooja's Picks. My name is Pooja, and I'm here to bring you the latest in movie news. Here are all of my picks for the week. Godzilla Kong The New Empire is the latest installment of the MonsterVerse that began in 2014 with Godzilla. The film brings Godzilla and Kong back on the screen together, but this time as an unlikely team-up as it focuses on the new threat born from Skull Island, home of Kong. It's expected that we'll be seeing plenty of Titan monsters like the ones we saw in 2016's Kong Skull Island. Meanwhile, the film welcomes back Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, and Kaylee Hall whom we saw in Godzilla vs. Kong in 2001, while also introducing new castmates Dan Stevens, Fala Chen, Alex Ferns, and Rachel House. As a newcomer to the world of Titan monsters, I cannot wait to watch Godzilla and Kong on the big screen. What do you do when your best friend of forever and the love of your life falls head over heels for the new transfer student? Well, that's exactly the premise of Prime Video's new film, How to Date Billy Walsh. The film focuses on Amelia and Archie, two best friends who have known each other since their childhood days. But when Archie finally gets the courage to confess his feelings of love for Amelia, her attention is immediately stolen by the American transfer student, Billy Walsh. Archie tries to keep them apart, only to end up putting his own friendship at risk. The film stars Charitra Chandran, Sebastian Croft, and Tanner Buchanan, all of whom are familiar faces that you've probably seen on shows like Bridgerton, Heartstopper, and Cobra Kai. I am a sucker for teen romantic comedies, and this one looks like an absolute joy to watch. And finally, one of my most anticipated movies of the year, Monkey Man. The film follows a young man who makes a living in an underground fight club as he's beaten night after night by other fighters. With his rage boiling over and his childhood trauma coming back to haunt him, he sets off on a mission of revenge and faces off against those who took everything away from him. Not only does Dev Patel lead a predominantly South Asian cast in the film, but he also wrote, directed, and produced the film alongside Jordan Peele and Monkey Paw Productions. While many have been quick to declare this the Indian John Wick, Patel has stated that Monkey Man takes heavy inspiration from East Asian action films, specifically from Korea, in the same way John Wick has. It's been a long time coming, and I cannot wait to see what Dev Patel has in store for us with this directorial debut. 
Well, that's all that I have for this week. Be sure to keep an eye out for reviews on all three movies and tune into the next episode of Fandoms for another segment of Pooja's Picks. Until then, back to the show. And as always, great recommendations. Oh. Uh, I've, I've heard that uh, Godzilla and Kong, um, Godzilla X Kong, mm-hmm. um, is has done really poorly on when it comes to Rotten Tomatoes, but the the audience score is extremely high, which which just goes to prove if you've got monsters that are doing monstrous things, uh, we will be there to watch it. I don't know why your title is still up there, other than the fact that I am not I am not rich. Uh, there our, we go. Our, uh, our uh, our man in the chair is is um, is away this week, and so uh, you guys are stuck with me. So I, I just like to say right now to Rich, enjoy the next one hour blooper reel. <laughs> also, also Tony, I wanted to say uh, I'm very excited once again to be your podcast passenger princess. I I really look forward to to you driving things and me just providing a little bit here and there that hopefully you need. And lastly, I also want to say on Pooja's picks, even though like the Godzilla thing, I think the I think the, you, the problem is with Godzilla minus one happening. I almost wonder if also some kind of a, a higher bar has been set in the expectation for these movies, even though they're a totally with different critics. thing. All right. But, but lastly, I just want to say regarding um, monkey man, uh, I'm really looking forward to this, and in butchering the story, I don't know if you're aware of this, but apparently he was just like trying, he he was trying to either get distribution or um, production support for making this film, and nobody else would buy it, and then Jordan Peele heard about it, and he's like, what the hell, man? Yeah, why not? Let's go. Yeah, so, which, which uh, is I'm really looking forward to that. Which is absolutely something, that, I mean, that's that's a gr- cool part about it, because now it's like very anticipated, it's gotten really good reviews, I think it was it was just at Sundance, um, uh, and so so it's uh, it's obviously going to get a lot of, of responses and reaction. Now, as for the Passenger Princess thing, like, I feel like I'm returning the favor because that was very much uh, me yesterday, um, <laughs> if you all don't know, uh, Will had me on NetHeads. Um, and it's kind of becoming a thing now before fandoms I'm on netheads. I so people who never wanted to have both of us two days in a row can definitely get what they didn't want. Um, mm-hmm. and, and absolutely, you know, it's, it's doing them no favors, but it's, it's enjoyable for me. And we had a good talk. Um, we, we, we very lightly dabbled into talking about tonight, which we're talking about Marvel. Um, there's a lot of been a lot of news going on with Marvel, not just with Marvel Studios. We've got Marvel Animation, we've got Marvel video games. Um, and then of course, we're gonna also touch at the end a little bit about this Disney shale shareholder the debacle like showdown that's going on with Disney with the Disney board. Mm. Um, and how that pertains to Marvel because um the one of the individuals who's trying to get two seats on the board um nelson pelts had some very directly candid things to say about marvel and diversity so we'll we'll talk about that at the end mm, i think um, i've got wind of this yeah so so last night you said you hadn't done it did you take the time today to catch up at all oh what absolutely not i no, i really didn't. wish i had and there were moments i contemplated it but uh you know unfortunately i am not one of them high paid professional influencers i'm just a normal guy with a normal job that's got to get work done so uh no unfortunately i didn't but hopefully i'll be taking away some things to look forward to like maybe tomorrow or or mid morning on on uh easter sunday for for me yeah so uh just as a reminder x97 we are in the second week of it it came out last week uh with two episodes uh, this is a direct continuation from the X-Men animated series from the 90s. Uh, in fact, I would say it's probably the best represented um, show for the X-Men comics. Even when you think about like, you know, Brian Singer's X-Men, X2, and, and Last Stand, which we don't want to really talk about. And then the the soft reboot after Days of Future Past. Um, we have this this um, this great representation of what a lot of people fell with and they really delved deeply into the whole, you know, civil rights, the whole, you know, humans versus mutant storyline, which was fantastic. Um, and they, of course, they picked this up. And um, for those of you who who don't know, um, not only did X-Men 97 do really well for itself in the sense that um, X-Men 97 has had four million views in its first five days on Disney Plus. Whoa. 
So it makes X Men ninety seven the streamer's most watched season one premiere for a full length animated series um, since Marvel's What If, which is actually really impressive. If you think about, you know, we've had things like, you know, um, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. We've had, you know, other things that have hit Hamster and Gretel and a, a bunch of things that have gone to um, the storyline and or to different like storylines for like different cartoons within the Disney, you know, flagship. But X Men 97 is hit home with a lot of people. And it's funny because there was a person on TikTok who made, a, who made a video that, of course, probably did it just for the idea of going viral, asking, who asked for this? And of course, the answer is everybody who watched the original show and everyone who was nostalgic to the X Men. And what a lot of people don't realize is this concept for X Men 97. Uh, let me just throw the title up there for just a second uh, X Men 97. This is not a new concept. In fact, um, it was the 2015 Secret Wars, the last Secret Wars that happened in the comics, where the Ultimate Universe and the 616 collided together, and we got Battle World with Doom being God, that there was an actual X-Men 92 um, world, like, like realm within that world. And so the comic book was very nostalgic to the original series. It was, it was very much in that vein with, with the different characters. And so it kind of resurged a lot of the nostalgia for a lot of people. And then it ended up becoming a, a comic series in of its own after Secret Wars after a while. And so there were people that were interested in this show. And just to give an idea of how nostalgic this makes people, not only did this show um, hit 4 million views in its first five days, but the viewership for the original X-Men animated series on the streamer increased by 522% when the X-Men 97 trailer launched on February 15th. That's according to Deadline. So you imagine not only did this show do well in and of itself, but then it also increased the, like, like Marvel has wanted to do, Disney's wanted to do this on Disney Plus, where if you look at like when Black Panther came out, all of the things that Black Panther was in became a timeline on the Marvel section of, of Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, and when Hocus Pocus 2 was coming out, Hocus Pocus was in the forefront. As you have different things that are coming out, Disney Plus has tried to market itself to make people want to go back and watch those things, hoping that not only will people be like, oh, I'm excited about the sequel, but I want to go ahead and go get catch up on everything else. That's why with um, like with Daredevil and everything else coming into the MCU and being official, there was that entire, you know, Netflix, you know, Defender series group, hoping people, people were hoping they'd go back and watch all of those shows because the more streaming, the more they can justify doing these things. Um, and again, which, which is sad because Disney plus is, is actually losing Disney money. Um, but you have to imagine that things like this will increase viewership and the model of them not releasing all the episodes like they did for echo, I think would be good. Um, but I also believe what we've gotten now is we have people that are, they, they wait for the end of a release for things. So think about it. So 5 million views for X-Men 97 first five days, there's going to be another resurgence once the last episode for the, ep for the season or the series, because then people are going to subscribe for Disney plus binge it all at once and then not renew the next month, which mm -hmm. I think is the biggest streamers problem. But what are your thoughts? Well, uh, I again, I, I we did kind of hit on this last night as well, and and also I, I'd like to uh, kind of apologize to you because I um I I can't believe I never came to the real realization of if I'm doing this with you like every other week, why am I not having you on every other week as well to create a natural handoff between the two audiences? Why didn't I just think of that as a regular thing? Um, you know, I, as I've said, uh, yesterday too, like the biggest player in one of the biggest players in the game right now in streaming Disney plus, mm -hmm. I don't understand how they're, uh, competing in this realm because I'm sure there's a lot of special financing behind places like Netflix, but, but I guess now it, it was now that I think about it in the past 24 hours, it's probably a very dumb statement for you to make because. 
almost every streaming service now is backed by a major entertainment company. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're all just trying to, I, I really think the, the crazy thing is I really think it's a bunch of businesses competing in a marketplace that they thought they had to compete in. And now they're just all trying to figure out what it, the definition of winning even is, uh, mm -hmm. in that realm. So, uh, you know, I personally think that uh, as long as they produce original content, I'm in. And I think that uh, as long as it, the other important part is, of course, the quality has to be there, right? You, you, right. you got to, it's got to be something you want to see. But, you know, I, I again, I the hardest thing for me to conceptualize is, is why, biz, why all these businesses are playing chicken in this realm in this way other than the fact that there has been this dynamic switch to the streaming mm -hmm. services so you know I, I i think that i think what it all boils down to for me really regardless of, of any of the stuff that's going on um i i just i i want to be entertained and as long as they're putting out new marvel stuff i'm gonna be there but i think they also need to realize that we've been through a lot of stuff since Endgame, and i also think that i'm throwing out a lot of ideas here i apologize but i also think that marvel didn't didn't know after Endgame how they were going to get to the next thing and i think they're probably they've probably been focused improperly on coming up with that next big thing rather mm -hmm. than just focusing on telling these stories and kind of having just a loose definition of what the next thing is and just plant seeds of it, man. Just get your chess players on the table, play the game. That's it. Don't get fancy. You pulled it off once, you get Martin and McFeely back in here, you'll pull it off again. Anyway, sorry, that's that, a lot of stuff. So, so that's the that's big thing, because a lot of people are talking, and this is going to go back to what we were talking about or what I said about Marcus Nelson and McFeely, at the way. end. Sorry, I don't want to get hate. Yeah, now. Marcus and McFeely. I think a lot of people forget that a lot of phases one through three were written by Marcus and McFeely. You had a lot of, you know, phases two and three, you know, the bigger like team up uh, ship movies that were done by the Russo brothers. And yes, there is a little, there is an allowance for people to go off and do things, but they're, they've got, they've got to be, they've got to at least have the reins on the scripts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not about the issue with diversity. It's not the issue with, you know, um, you know, pushing any type of agenda. It's a matter of having cohesive scripts that move, move forward mm -hmm. and, and are, are that do allow for some interconnection, um, within the universe. I think Marvel has gotten too focused on their little Easter eggs that they forgot to like make mm -hmm. the bigger connections, um, throughout things. But that's, you know, that's something that I think they're going to be working on, especially when it comes like the, the Disney plus series with having showrunners versus like doing these little limited series. I think that's going to be better for them. Um, and then when we were talking, going back to the whole streaming concept, you've got to have this, this understanding that when you, when you leave cable, when you leave television, you're losing, you're losing syndication. You're losing a lot of the things you're losing that automatic sponsorship by, by brands and advertisers and you've got to find a happy medium because if you're, if you're, if your viewers are paying and if you have cable and you don't think you were paying, listen, you were paying for Fox news and you didn't know it. Um, there, there are, there are things that you paid for. So it wasn't like you weren't already subscribed to these channels where these shows were taking place, but you have streaming services that are trying to make original content and they're realizing that there is more money to be made in almost like syndication and licensing than there is to actually streaming case in point max formerly hbo max now is currently max if you go on netflix right now you can get a lot of the dc catalog for dc movies um i was i was just on there recently um watch for watching the 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 new avatar series and what really surprised me was the fact that you can now watch the suicide squad, like the James Gunn suicide squad and all these other things. And those things are there and you don't even, what happened to the fact of like, Oh, if you're, if you're watching max, 
then you you get all of these things and it's exclusive to this. There's no money to be had there, you know. And so it's real. It's real realizing that we're gonna, unless they figure everything out and they work together, we're gonna have a bunch of streaming services that have the exact same catalog. And you just have to pick which one you want. Do you want the Disney Plus one? Do you want the HBO Max one? Do you want the Amazon Prime or the Amazon Video? Whatever it is, it's it's not going to really be anything specific or original unless they figure something out. So, I don't know. Um, but along with that, um, X-Men 97 has been doing really well. Um, in fact, I would say the stories have been great. I mean... Will you're you're going into this blind, but yeah. Magneto is now the leader of the X Men. What in the holy high heck are you talking about? Um, that is not possible. So, spoiler alert to anybody who's not watched the show. Some of this has been prefaced in the in the in the trailers. So, if you see at least in the trailers, you know this. Charles Xavier is not in this show because he's dead. He was assassinated at the end of the original series. And so they're going into this idea that he's assassinated. There's better mutant human relations right now, begrudgingly. And so the X-Men are trying to continue working with like the United Nations to combat. And so the Sentinel program has been, has been, has been, um, has been taken down. Things we seem to be good. Of course you have the, the hate group um, that are anti-mutants that are still involved and they're, they're using basically, um, uh, retro um, Sentinel tech uh, to make weapons for uh, mm. the fight against mutants. Um, and then you think the first episode's over. And then all of a sudden you find out that Charles Xavier actually willed his, his riches, his mansion and the X-Men to Magneto. And so he, he episode two is mainly Magneto proving himself and then you also find out there's another love triangle beyond the Jean Grey, Scott Summers, and no and way, Wolverine. no, 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 no. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's 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 so much fun, and and it really it works really well. What I what I've loved about these episodes are they leave a little bit of a cliffhanger, um. So they 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 definitely hook you for the next episode. Um, they're much more combined. The if you go back to the original series, some of them feel like there there are part one and two part twos. Um, some of them kind of feel self-contained, but they're part of a whole, a bigger story. Um, these are very much kind of hooking into the next episode. So you're kind of, you're kind of following along in timeline with them and it's, it's, it's really working. Plus you're getting more of certain characters. You've got more you, that's back. You've got Jubilee that has more of a, a, a role in things. And so it's definitely feeding into, I think what fans are looking forward to. And then of course, just bringing back the, the the voice cast from the original series is the is the most genius thing. I have Lenore Zan um, uh, at the beginning of the episode saying that you're watching fandoms. Um, I, I met her at, uh, in New York Comic Con this last year and it got, was had a chance to interview her. And to to say that they're happy to be working now, not working together so much because they all are in like different parts of the country when they're when they're recording, but like them being back and doing this and it being something that they're familiar with and that they love um has definitely been important to them and i think that speaks volumes to the whole to the whole thing um and then oh. of course with this last episode um getting the 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 little hints and the little prods to uh things in the future and of course fulfilling prophecy that you know the comics have definitely explained has been has been fantastic i i absolutely oh. love it i highly recommend it i i just remember there was one point um and I'm going to get the name of the place wrong, I know, but I feel like there was one point in the actual comics run when um, uh, it was perceived that uh, Charles Xavier had died, and then later he's found, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm getting this wrong, but he was found in the Savage Land or whatever their version of it was yeah. in, the Marv in the MCU. Uh, and, you know, he had use of his legs and all kinds of stuff, you know, it was like a whole separate story. And it's like, okay, I, you know, comic books, whatever. But, you know, it's nice to see that they're also taking the IP in, in new and interesting directions for this. It's like, I, I don't, I, I don't know much of the backstory as well, because obviously since I was, was married and working when this cartoon originally came out, um, I, I, it wasn't something I, you know, I just, I would check it out once or twice, but you know, I didn't really get into it, but when it comes to the republishing or to the continuation of the show, 
uh, how much of the, if any, of the original people are involved? Oh, like the voice actors and such? No, 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 no. I mean, like the production people behind it, the writers and so. You in know, other I words, I don't I'm... know that for per se, but I know they okay. brought all of the the original cast back. Yeah, because the only thing I would hope is that, um, just as a as a creative person that likes to support creative people, you know, I I only hope that in some way, if if they aren't weren't originally involved, if in some way they had access to information and now not only are they able to essentially play with these toys, but they have the satisfaction of knowing they're continuing the vision that perhaps they came up with that, that they didn't get to do when the series was canceled. So yeah, that's my bit on it as a person who hasn't watched anything of it yet. Oh yeah. I, I really feel like if that would be the, that would be the best thing. Um, if they at least looked at the notes of like what they were planning for the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but at the same time, I think also, what 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 really helps is even though this is this still goes back in time this is going back to 97 like this is that that time frame you're you're still getting a better perspective i think on these characters and it's almost like whereas x-men 97 was it was in the moment and they were it, it was basically a product of the time Mm -hmm. Now you're able to kind of go back and almost make it feel like it's in a time capsule and go back and, and recall and kind of lead into things and, and kind of see things that could build into, you know, what happened after 97. So um, there's a lot of potential there, but honestly, um, as long as it's a good story and it's, it, you know, and it, it's, it's got a compelling message, you know, I think it's going to resonate. Well, I, there are people that hate it. Cause I, I um, let's face it. Um, uh, there's a, there's a scene where Gambit shows midriff and people are extremely upset that Gambit would be wearing what looks like a Guns N' Roses, you know, kind of crop top looking top. And it's like, no, that, 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 that checks. Maybe it's more eighties than nineties, but Gambit's a Gambit's an adult. He wasn't a kid in the nineties, mm -hmm. an adult in the nineties, which if you remember, and I remember that there were some fashions that should have stayed in the eighties, but the adults like to keep them li li living and going. And so, you know, it's it's one of those things where like things overlap and, and translate and it makes better sense. Um, well, but, you know, the, the, yeah. the cool thing is that in the case of, of anything you watch, art is always reflective of the time that it is created because mm -hmm. the things that are going on are on the forefront of people's minds when they aren't getting to do the creating. So even through the subconscious, it'll seep through. You know, you saw that with, with things like Star Trek. Uh, you said, well, Next Generation, because I'm just going, because that's my only example. But even Star Wars was a, a certain commentary on things. Yes, it was a lot of ripping off from, from Japanese storytelling, but it also was, you know, in some ways a, a commentary on the time or a, a World War II commentary, if you will. So it, I like what Z says here, though. He's Cajun. He couldn't help it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like, like, yeah, you, you, you just, you gotta, do he's just, gotta, he's just happy not to go out and, and catch possum to eat for dinner. You know what I mean? I so, will, I will tell you though, like the one thing I was, that scene, the thing that, that caught me more, if you've watched anybody doing the TikTok filter, the glamour filter, where it makes them look like they've got like the, mm -hmm. the, the very flourished eyebrows and stuff. Like I was looking at it like, man, um, at that moment, Gambit looked a lot better than most of the female characters in that, in that scene. So like, like he had the, the hair was all feathered and everything. I'm like, man, this guy knew how to, how to dress. Um, and so, so like, like, absolutely. Okay, curious choice, but whatever. Well, whatever, but, um, let's keep, let's keep it moving. We've, we've spent 12, about almost 30 minutes on just this topic. And we were um, supposed to cover like five more. Good luck. Yeah, pal. We got lots of things. So let's, let's go ahead and continue with the Marvel studios. Like the, the vein um something something interesting to remember um we did get confirmation that that spider-man 4 is in pre-production where did um, you get this from um the rumor mill man like like no it's, okay it's, see because here's it's the been thing reported. no it's been reported I, I don't have the source right now trust but verify my friend before of 50 you go viewers, on the air calling me out trust but verify well, yeah only because this is getting my hopes up in a way i don't need right now no, but it has been it has been um, it has been said that uh, they are working on pre-production, um, and of course, Spider-Man is uh, in in the um, let's just say it's in the process to where 
um, they could begin filming as early as the fall of this year. Mm. Um, so, well, and I'll tell you right now, no matter what the partnership is, I guarantee you Marvel is, is they, they nudged up to Sony and said, Hey, Hey, I got a little extra something, something. If we can get this going a little sooner, cause we, we kind of need that bump. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's not without headaches though, because Sony, Sony and, and, and Marvel studios was debating about who the director was going to be. I know they, mm -hmm. um, I know John Watts had walked away, yeah. um, but they were wanting to have him come back for this. Um, and then of course, Sony was really pushing for the whole multiversal, you know, another no way home style film, um, with more Spider-Man, more villains, like, and okay. And of course but the, but I, even I know me as a fan, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pump the brakes, which is funny because if you think about the the argument that a lot of a lot of fans have had with the Spider Man films, you had you had Spider Man Homecoming where he's in New York for a little bit, but he's in DC and you know he's dealing with you know Vulture stuff. Mm -hmm. You then have Far From Home where he's in Europe. It's basically Spider Man, you know, European vacation. Yeah, and then you've got you've got No Way Home, which yes is in that vein, but. It's very much a multiversal mystical um, film. And as much as I loved seeing Spider-Man interact with Stephen Strange, because that's one of the my favorite comic team ups mm -hmm. is because they are friends in the comics and they get into lots of hijinks and Spider-Man has saved Stephen Strange's butt a few times. But let's be honest, I want to see ground level fighting um, with Spider-Man now. He's done all of these things. And now he needs to be the nobody Look, and he has that chance to do that. Here is the thing. I'm going to say the quiet part out loud that nobody's saying. And it's the thing we all want. Okay. Marvel, if you are listening to me, they aren't, we know this, but if you could take one thing away, throw more money at Sony, if you have to, why, why am I doing a presidential hand there? Uh, you need to get three care at least two characters on the screen and that is spider-man with kingpin maybe oh, daredevil yeah. too but definitely kingpin for those yeah. that don't know kingpin all you know because we do have certain street level superheroes spider-man really being one of them well like you just said sorry i know we're both in the same show but sometimes i'm doing my own one in my head and in, in in he was uh, Kingpin's he very heavily involved in Daredevil, but there is also a very long term integration of Spider Man against mm -hmm. Kingpin as well. And, oh yeah. And after we have seen Daredevil come back, and and hopefully what we see from Born Again, you know we see we see a lot of cool exciting stuff, but we need a Fisk that is. That's still out there when that series ends, because that's what I believe now every mega Spider-Man fan wants to see because oh, I yeah. do. And I'll be honest with you. Um, I loved how they leaned into the whole with great power. There, there must also come great responsibility. I feel like having may be the uncle Ben for Peter in this universe oh. um, was a good, was a very good choice. I will say though, I am disappointed that we will never get a moment where Fisk finds out who Spider-Man is, puts a hit out on Spider-Man, accidentally injures May, and then you have you have Peter come to Fisk and beat him from an inch of his life and letting him know if Aunt May dies, I'll finish the job. Like mm -hmm. that, that knowing how everyone realizes Spider-Man is a powerful character and like and even when like he went toe to toe with Cap um, and Cap, what did Cap do? He he launched he he dropped an entire like terminal like thing, mm -hmm. a box on Spider Man, and Spider Man took it. Um, same same strength, much more powerful. And with his youth, Peter has the ability to decimate people, but he doesn't do it. He's always showing meekness, and of course, you can't translate meekness for weakness. Mm -hmm. And and I think that. That moment when when in the comics you see how how powerful Peter could be, 
and what he could be when he stops telling the jokes. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's what I'm I, I I look forward to. I look look forward to seeing that um that type of uh, Zay Z uh, Spider Man. Are we home yet? Um, <laughs> <laughs> took me completely out of what I was saying, but. But having that visceral Spider-Man or having that op opportunity to show that Fisk is one of the characters who brought the worst out of Peter. Like mm -hmm. Peter, Peter stopped being the joking guy when it came to some of the stuff with Wilson Fisk. So absolutely. And I think it was it was it was not a surprise that Sony with Into the Spider-Verse, or I'm sorry, yeah, Into the Spider-Verse used Wilson Fisk as that as that leader for that storyline because he is the big bad. He, mm -hmm. he is and regardless because he's not a spider-man villain he's not a daredevil villain he's a new york villain and i think that's that that's what Bay it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like the hand for daredevil it's you know they're that 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 kind of like the foot clan for the ninja turtles because that was what that's what uh the, the foot clan came from is the inspiration of of the hand with daredevil mm -hmm. um you have those things hydra for captain america um fisk is the new york villain so this is true yeah, yeah yeah but you see i'm telling you and it's not just so i could be a stand-in on production for uh for kingpin you know what i mean and that guy he's about the same size i got, got the right kind of sheen we can use him for lighting now before we go any further and talk about anything else i do want to do this because i didn't do it at the beginning and because there are literally what 69 people watching right now what in the no sweet idea. baby i heck? have no idea what y'all are doing but i appreciate the heck out of you uh, a couple things because well, they're, you know. they're confused they thought you had vincent d'onofrio on well there we go yeah just sure um and so uh just remember uh my 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 wonderful co-host over here uh will wilkins is part of the smodcast network uh you can catch him on netheads um i was just on his last show yesterday um and so you can definitely check that out um it's been fantastic also if you love nerd initiative you love what we've been doing you love the comic section the pro wrestling section i i challenge you go check out the nerd initiative merch store um they we've well, they we have got some pretty amazing things um in fact i can tell you right now this hat came off of the merch store and it's it's pretty slick i absolutely love it um and you can find this and other things especially things that are hat. um that specialize to the shows um or the franchises that we're doing that you love if you have recommendations you can always also reach out to us um, on our contact page which also gives you a good opportunity to be able to um so basically, um, you know, join our newsletter, which is on the QR code. I'm trying to remember right here. Ah, you look at that. QR code, you nailed it, um, baby. Yeah, you, you can actually uh, subscribe to our newsletter. Um, it goes out around the like the 15th of every month. Um, and we try to tell you about the cool stuff that's going on. Um, but I can tell you right now, if you're not checking out the Nerd Initiative website, um, every Wednesday, we have the comic bullpen that is going through and giving you their recommendations and their reviews of the comics that are hitting from things like DC, Marvel, Boom. Um, I'm losing my I'm losing my mind here. Image Comics, um, as well as a lot of different indie things. Um, and, and of course, you can also check out um, at the beginning of the week. Um, our our good friend Comic Concierge does a. Uh, most anticipated list, the top 10 most anticipated comics. Um, and then, of course, on Tuesdays, you can catch out uh, Ken M., uh, the editor-in-chief for the bullpen, um, going through with the Nerd Initiative bullpen team, um, talking about uh, the comics that they love. They'll go over sometimes the different runs of comics, as well as they'll bring on certain creators. And they've had some great interviews recently, so you can check those things out as well. Um, and, of course, our... Our, our producer, our man in the chair is not here this week, uh, but I would be amiss not to recommend you checking out um, his show every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time, Wrestling Night Live. They're on the road to WrestleMania, as well as they'll be doing a pre-show, I believe, next week, um, a little bit earlier than normal. Um, and of course, there won't be the actual like um, before and after show for WrestleMania, I think, this, this time. Um, with Rich, because Rich is going to be on location at WrestleMania, um, being able to see everything ringside. So um, super excited for that. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think I've gone through all of the rigmarole of things that we need to recommend and we didn't lose anybody. So let's continue on and move on to the next topic, which happens to be Marvel video games. No and way. Of course, we know that Marvel has done some really well, good video games, specifically in the vein of Spider-Man. 
Hence, we were just talking about Spider-Man. Um, but we had Spider-Man 2 that came out this fall. Um, we also have the promise of the the new uh new game coming out uh marvel uh 1943 uh rise of hydra Which... with a azuri not a t'challa black panther versus captain america or at least you know working in tandem or against captain america at the beginning and the um the storyline uh uh teaser that they gave uh, just recently, and you can also find it um, on um, on YouTube on the the Marvel Entertainment uh, uh, social media channels is is actually pretty phenomenal. Uh, thoughts? Did you? Here's what I'm gonna tell you about this video game, man. I am glad I now have this Odyssey G9 giant monitor because did you see the Unreal Five engine or whatever it is that it's rendered out of? Did you see what the game playing experience and capability is like? They are getting terrifyingly amazing in high detailed environments that are near photorealistic. And I can't even fathom playing this game. It's going to break my brain. I just know that the Unreal Engine had done some amazing things when it came to Epic Games Fortnite especially the creative aspect of it, mm -hmm. but to see what they're doing with actual live gameplay, like I'll be oh, honest. That, yeah. They, I mean, that was another part of that demo not that we're talking Fortnite, but man, oh man, when I say there, I'm like, there's no way my computer's not choking on that. But at the same time, you know, one of the, one of the cool things I've always noticed about Unreal is, is it, is it utilizes um, a computer's capabilities, but it's also not super load heavy as mm. it could be. Um, and so I'm really excited to see what it does. I mean, mind you, we, if you're a nerd like us, you're watching this, you're watching this right now, all 76 of you, who the heck are you guys? They're, I'm, they're I'm, over there. Don't worry, but I, stop I, calling. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, unless you guys want to jump into some type of chat thing so we can shout out your names, which we're more than happy to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't, don't listen. We, we can show, we can show your, your, your chat. If you make some good points or you have like opinions on this stuff. Please feel free. We can see, regardless of where you're at, if it's YouTube, Twitter, uh, Facebook, whatever it is, we can see it. Um, so yeah, we can post the chat, and we can we can pop you in here, um, and we can we can show your chat if you have a good point. So um, feel free to, to 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 jump in on the comments. Um, but there there, Unreal has done some amazing things. I love the fact that it because it's Unreal. It's it's Unreal how awesome it is. Mm -hmm. um, I was I was really one of those guys who was an early adopter to a lot of, a lot of video games, especially if it had something to do with Marvel. Um, I tried really hard to like Marvel Alliance. I wasn't; it just didn't work for me. Um, my kids got the you know the the Lego the Marvel superheroes the Lego stuff, which is how it was the gateway for him to know about X Men characters and Fantastic Four, which was great. And then. Marvel's Avengers came out on the PS4 and I had high hopes. And I'll tell you, there were some things they did fantastic. The story was great. And then the mechanics were terrible. And so, first of all, if the gameplay is anything like the storyline that we saw in that Unreal preview, I'm ex I, I don't care. I, I'll, I will struggle through a really poorly programmed video game with bad mechanics for that storyline because the storyline looks legitimately amazing mm -hmm. by itself but with the unreal engine and what what they're trying to do this game has the makings of being up there with spider-man 2 now the only problem based on the segments that we saw right like the gameplay and the scene that we saw actually you know wait a second maybe i'm wrong here i'm trying to think of the timeline Okay, so they take the Winter Soldier at the end to Wakanda, right? Because the only thing that I'm wondering was, was there a moment in Civil War where Cap sees T'Challa and just makes the reference that there's another player, but he doesn't know who it is? Because if, the, if 1943 is supposed to be canonical to the MCU, then you got a little bit of a problem. But other than that... Not to be pedantic, too late. 
Uh, other than that, yeah, I love everything I see here, and but I don't even know if it's if it's MCU canonical I don't, or it's, I don't, a, or it's I don't just think the it's story. Be. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be. Yeah, because I, I just I already pointed it. out one one example of uh, oops. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I would not want it to be. Um, I personally feel like the 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 video game universe should be its own thing. Like this this game should delve or at least be in the same universe as Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2. Like mm -hmm. that 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 should be a Yeah, there you go. given. Quick um, easy way to do it. Because I mean like we're also I I don't know what the status of I didn't look it up for this but I know there was still the rumor that that the the Logan uh video game was still a possibility. And so um with with the potential that um these games could be in and of themselves their own universe which thank you very much i, I appreciate you second that um they should and they deserve to be in their own universe and we should have the video game universe we should have the mcu we should have mm -hmm. the, the comics universe and let them be their own thing because um, then you get to have a moment where you make a silly crossover happen and people get all excited like when we saw an animated spider pig or spider ham yeah spider pig Ugh, take yeah. away my nerd card yeah, and you realize you understand Spider Ham um was a was a was a spider that was bitten by a radioactive pig. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was I know which way okay. it went. And then there's and then there's Spider's Man. Mm -hmm. There's there's lots of there, there, it's, it's wonky, and of course, none of it was touched on by my Madam Webb, but we're not gonna get on that tonight. Um Still we're, we're gonna seen it. we're gonna keep away from that. We won't touch Probably that. Probably not gonna a, see it. With there's, gonna, there's gonna be in the moments where I, I wish to torture myself the most. Or, or in a decade from now, when it's it's fun to poke fun at it, even more so, uh, then I might watch all of these alternative Sony. I didn't. I saw, I saw somebody. It it seems like every time there is an, another one of these movies that comes out that are the Sony Spider Verse ones, if you will. Uh, it seems like every every time those come out, there's always an article that says, "Oh, this is." ringing the death to death ring for you know sony spider-verse and i think the last buzz buzzworthy uh headline i saw on it was that venom 3 may be the the final nail in that universe's coffin not because of it being bad but just like okay we got to pull the ripcord guys we're we're not getting the results we need here i don't know like the venom movies still do relatively well yeah, even because they they're do great. so it's like so so it's it's kind of free money, even though like if it's not gonna be a Spider-Man film and you're not gonna have Spider-Man be the origin of the character, still the character Venom has a very it has a very strong fan base, and so I don't think it's going to suffer as much. Like, it's kind of one of those things, Morbius, Morbius. No, no real fan base. I mean, come on. Um, I think, I think for films like Morbius, things like, um, Madam Web, their biggest selling point is how bad they were. Mm -hmm. And we already know, yeah. what was it? Sweeney already said she did the film because it was a gateway into further stuff with Sony. Like, there you go. So, yeah. So, you you got to play the game, man. Exactly. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you just, you kind of pay your dues. And of course, why not do a, you, you, you can finally add a comic book character, superhero film to your re resume without ever having to worry about doing any further ones. Cause they're never going to make anything more. It's because people aren't going to say, Oh, they were terrible actors. No, it was a terrible script. And so there, there is there. It's like they did the best that they could with the script that they had. They had to mm -hmm. phone it in because you know, it's, it, we now have a whole genre now where it's people going like, what movie did a, did a, did a, um, did a celebrity do just for the money? I mean, if you think about it, Sean Connery, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, that may have, mm -hmm. you know, caused him to go in an early retirement. He just did it for the money. Um, but I digress. We're, you know, everything else. Um, before we go into uh, a little bit of a hinty thing back in Marvel Studios, uh, there was another video game that was announced this week, um, specifically a game that is very reminiscent and is also being accused of copying uh, the game Overwatch. And that is the game Marvel Rivals. Um, this is going to be a computer based game only. It does mm. not look like it's going to consoles. Um, this is a PVP. It's kind of a, um, like a six versus six shooter type game where there are variations. It looks like there's, 
it's like this this battle world where there are different versions of doom that are overlording and are fighting amongst themselves um and it looks like there's also like a female galactus or the daughter of galactus that's involved um and so you have marvel superheroes that are actually battling um you know in different rounds um it was definitely it was definitely there was a artist that had done um some pre-rendering or some pre pre-art to kind of like pitch for this and has made accusations that there was really no direction for this for this game mm. um and that it was basically said let's copy overwatch which i'm not a person that's played overwatch i'm mainly the mm. the fortnite type guy and we know you know disney marvel star wars is all going in that direction mm. um but this game was a bit of a surprise for me that they want to do this um I, I I feel like either these PvP games either do really well or they just fizzle out, and um, we'll see. I don't know. It if it's PC and it's it's kind of like Fortnite where it's free, but you can have to buy in-game stuff. I'll probably definitely give it a try. Um, but what do you think, Will? Is this something that you'd be interested in? Look, man, I peaked at Street Fighter Three. Okay, that's that's as far as I got. I don't go anymore. So uh, it just doesn't apply. <laughs> I, I wanna, I wanna look. I wanna go on t into a game and and sh either shoot strangers or just play against the game. I I have no interest in in having, you know, my wife be better at a fighting game than me, which tends to happen. Well, it's again, it's it, not it's not as much of a fighting game or as it's like a it's it's like a. It's it's very much like rounds like Fortnite. Oh, okay. I understand, and it's like smaller. It's not like a big group game. Like it'd be kind of like squads, like one squad versus another. Yeah. And it's kind of like a shooter game. Um, okay. Which, which it'll be interesting to see what they do with the different characters. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's, I, unfortunately, I still don't know how much it would apply to me because I hate to say this, but like part of the reason why Fortnite is a draw for me is because of the silliness of the game uh it because really it's a it's already an absurd concept and the 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 artistic choices they show made and the things that are in game it's just it's it's fun and silly compared to like your your heavy duty call of duties and your and your overwatches and the like so if it's something yeah. like that if it's trying to be gritty and real with the characters as well i, I don't know that it would apply to me so much <laughs> Yeah, and I will say, like, I was also even skeptical with Fortnite when they started expanding to, like, you know, the racing and the festivals. And like, I, I will say, I did jump into Lego Fortnite and I did kind of get obsessed for a minute. Yeah. Um, I haven't done it for a while. Um, but, like, you can see right here, right next to me, um, mm -hmm. I got a PC guitar so I could do the Fortnite, fe the Fortnite festival stuff. Oh, my goodness. I thought, <laughs> I thought you had been like, I don't know, garage sailing and, and cruising no. dirt malls. I went to a bin. I, listen, I've been wanting one of these and I went to, you know me, I've been going to these bin stores where it's like reclaimed and, and, you know, returned Amazon items. And I've gotten some pretty amazing things. I will say, um, but this was one of them and it's a wireless PS3 or PC um, guitar hero ah. guitar. I was able to map the, the the keys, and so I can just sit there and do this the whole time. And when it when it goes through the boost, I just hit the whammy um, stick, and, <laughs> and it, I'm just, I, I'll I'll oh, literally just fun. sit there. And I'm like doing this thing like the whole time. So it's fun. It's yeah, because that I, I I have again not Marvel related. Uh, I I have, however, I did delve into like what that mo that game is and i will say I, I when i game it's hard to say i'm a like a pc gamer because it's almost like a hybrid console i play with one of these right so I, I used to have one of those and it, and it's the only reason why i can actually play not competitively but at least to the point where i don't go crazy in fortnite and the natural mapping they had was absurd because it was like fghj on your keyboard so just off your home with separate hands i'm like no 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 I'm going to map it to this thing and it's one, two, three, four, five or whatever. And may five, if you're doing the bonus one and it's just right here, the way it would be on the guitar. But the only thing is I also, I sh I'm used to doing this from playing the, the other various guitar based games. So it's like, it still doesn't feel natural to me because I hand my hands facing the wrong way. 
But I'm yeah. not going to sit and try and play the game with a controller yeah. upside down on my hands. That'd be I absurd. Ported to, I ported it to match it perfectly, so it's literally just like this. Um, so, so yeah, so that's the video game section. I will say, um, I, I did miss one thing. We were talking about Marvel Studios, Marvel Animation. Um, we talked about this last night on NetHeads. And again, if you don't know, I was on NetHeads with Will Wilkins. That Will Wilkins, he's the host of NetHeads. You can join him there. Um, and that was a tease um, from one Florence Pugh. Oh, yeah. Did, a, did a, a, a video which seemed like it was unauthorized, but it was authorized because we know that this thing was on Marvel's um, you know, social media page. And what caught everyone's attention was not just the fact that you actually get your first image of a scene um, from Thunderbolts, but mm -hmm. if you look under her hand, the, the, what was it called again? The chair back. Yeah. The chair back has Marvel studios, Thunderbolts, and there's an asterisk right next to the S and Thunderbolts. And yep. everyone's wondering what the heck does that mean? Mm -hmm. And we've, the we've determined it could be a working title. Um, the entire, you know, entire title and premise could be a misdirect um they may not end up being the thunderbolts may they may end up being like the dark avengers or the secret avengers or that's what i thought whatever. i thought it was going to be a dark avengers thing man it's i listen whatever it is it's definitely what and i even joked yesterday about it being mephisto but let, let's 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 just be honest what that asterisk is is free publicity for marvel studios thunderbolts mm -hmm. plain and simple whether yep. it means anything or not, it has garnered enough attention for even us to talk about it. Which, let's face it, I'm I'm basic. I you you do anything with Marvel, and I'm gonna, we're in I'm the bag for Marvel. As, as yeah, like, we're, as we're, the kids yeah, don't we're say. The, like like if you want if you want let, let me let me show you. There has been a report that there has been an official Marvel shill, and that is right here. <laughs> he's guys. He's just in the bag. He's not. He's. They don't Complete. pay him at all. I walked into the bag. I was born in the bag. <laughs> it's like I was born in the bag. <laughs> you, you merely I did not you, come you, out you of it. I was it. <laughs> no, it's like it's like by the way, I figured out why there's so many people watching. It's it's all the hydro bros that have been watching me drink 64 ounces of lemonade during the whole show. Either that or it's like the anime fan base because they're seeing me in my My Hero Academia Tumblr. I think that uh I think you're right. I didn't I never realized uh in the most simple of terms what that asterisk was, but it really is. It was just the it was the generation of buzz and it hit they hit home with it, they did exactly the right thing. I've said all along. It, no matter what you think of the movies, most of Marvel's marketing team, when they've got a project that they think is going to be good, they, they they do things right. Uh, but the thing I will say too is I, like, I would I like be it, I would be very interested to see what the viewing numbers over the next couple of weeks are going to happen with uh, black or with Black Widow and with the Hawkeye series on, on Disney plus, because I myself last night after seeing that, I'm like, Hey, you know what? I want to relax. Clickety clickety click. Oh, look at that cute family. Oh no, there's going to be trauma quick, but this is a nice moment. I went right into black widow because honestly speaking, I believe black widow was a great film. That's just, it was in the wrong place in the MCU in theaters timeline mm -hmm. so yeah and i i really enjoy it anyway so i'd be very interested to see that but you're me you're right man that asterisk was just pure buzz yeah so regardless of whatever it is it's got us hooked it's got us intrigued uh marvel's got us talking about it which is exactly what it was and I, of course i'm gonna throw these coming up here on the chats um the asterisk has just made you look you know it's, <laughs> <laughs> it was right anymore. there it was agatha all along exactly um Last last topic of conversation for this episode. We're already almost at an hour. We're like a few seconds away from it, um, which if we get this done within a few minutes of the hour would be phenomenal, especially with this amazing 92 viewers uh, that are watching this on various platforms. I am I'm an average. You all have made my day. I'm just going to say that right now. Um, 
the last thing we're going to talk about, maybe this is what everybody's kind of holding on to for, because they've had to listen to us talk for the last 59 minutes, um, or actually the hour now, um, is Disney is doing a stakeholders meeting on Wednesday of next week. This meeting has is garnering a lot of attention because there is actually a campaign from a couple different... Um, well, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say you. You can. Add, I was trying to stream this on TikTok. Oh, it didn't uh, work. Okay, my my well, live. In um, that case, I'm am- in the middle of it, so I said no. Um, so I was going to live stream this on TikTok, but no. Uh, this is well, this is well, purely organic. In that case, uh, I'm really one, impressed. All I did was one Instagram post, so I'm I'm amazed. I, I love you guys. Whoever you are, you all are amazing. Um, but all there right, was a stakeholders right. meeting um with Disney. Uh, that's coming up for Wednesday. Um, there are two different groups, but one is specifically um, the most, I think, concerning on my part. Um, and it's a group led by a individual um, by the name of Nelson Peltz. Um, Nelson Peltz is an activist and billionaire um, who has been wanting to have a seat on the board um, for a while with Disney. Um, and uh, this individual had some very candid things to say about Marvel movies in, in general. Um, recently, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this up here. Um, and this is what brings my concern. Uh, Nelson Peltz was recorded for saying this. Why do I have to have Marvel m- movies that are all women? Not that I have anything against women, but why do I have to do that? Why can't I have Marvels and um, Marvels that are both? Why do I need an all black cast? And I really feel like this is as tone deaf as Bob Chapik was um, back when he um, was talking about how Shang-Chi was going to be a, basically going to be a, a trial run, a test to see if it would work. And it was highly insensitive to mm-hmm. not only Chinese people, but people of color of, 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 of all different types um, because this was our first, you know, real beyond black Panther that it represented another uh, people group. Um, and especially for him to say, why do we have to all have an all black cast when it's coming from a country in Africa that's being depicted is really tone deaf. And it reminds me of Ike Perlmutter who didn't want female run films who didn't want you know people of color films because people of color and, and women don't sell toys. That was that was his 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 thought process, and so Nelson Peltz going for this board, having those things to say, wanting to bring into question. And listen, I'm not a big fan of Bob Iger. I you know pre pandemic, you know you thought Bob Iger did a lot of great things, Shanghai Disney, all this stuff that came out. Um, and then you have Bob Chapek and a lot of things were blamed on Bob Chapek. Um, and a lot of those things were still Bob Iger's fault. I do not personally feel like Nelson Peltz is going to be a good alternative. No, I mean, um, look, when you have a product that, uh, in order, I mean, like even at a basic level, okay. Let's just think about business. You have the ability to make a progress, a product that can be internationally attractive, that mm-hmm. can be product attractive and everything else. You have the ability to make that so you can create the widest reach possible by doing the most basic thing of inclusion. Yep. Why wouldn't you do it? So you need on these boards younger hungry but really good executives because there's one thing we need way less of both in entertainment and government we got to get rid of these old white dudes okay that's what it really is no no we're not old bro look okay <laughs> i'm i'm getting dangerously close you know i got to the moment i yell at a kid in my yard it's done but you know in the meantime We just need way less of old white dudes in general, because whether you like it or not, they, they will have, this is not an excuse, mind you. It's an honest statement. They are of a different time. So they're, they are literally trained to be this stupid and you Mm -hmm. just can't un you can't unlearn stupid people. So that's my thought. I'll say say this, like, and this, this is the thing, like there have been criticisms for things like the marbles and stuff like, and again, going back to it, the marbles was released right after the strikes. It didn't have a lot going for it. And here's the thing. It's not even, I'm taking your statement now. 
I feel like I need like a Ben Grimm like action figure. Like, here's the thing. Go ahead. Um, I feel like the biggest problem with the Marvels was their budget. I feel like what Marvel is doing is they're throwing too much money into their films. They should go back to basics with their special effects in a lot of cases and not try to do these giant spectacles mm -hmm. and allow for the films to speak for themselves. Let the cast and the crew and the, and the, and the actual like film have a chance where it doesn't need to make hundreds of millions of dollars to survive. Yeah, that's that, the whole that thing. would be great. Godzilla get minus one is a prime effects. example of what happens when you have a small budget, but you focus on the quality and you focus on the story. The Marvels was a good movie, mm -hmm. but was it was it was it one that had to deal with having to not only deal with the with the strikes and and what came after, um, but also dealing with toxic you know fan dudes or toxic dude bros. And then at the same time, have to make hundreds of millions of dollars. That wasn't fair. We're not talking about the fact that this was like the director's the, the directorial, de, directorial de, what debut of a superhero film. It was one of the highest grossing female directed like superhero films mm -hmm. um, and, and everything else. No, we're not talking about those because we're talking about how it was a, it was a flop. And if you're going to let these things happen, Wakanda Forever is a prime example. You let... You let the director, you let the writing speak for itself. Yes, it was it was it was SFX heavy. Yes, you knew when that boat showed up that things were not as perfect as it could be, but at the same time, the story was good in and of itself. And then you have, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, which yes, it's it's special effects heavy. But what did you do? You let James Gunn write and direct the story he meant to have, mm -hmm. and you allow these things to happen. And yeah the next movie or the next installment you can put a bigger budget on because you're letting the same, you know, like, like, like it's like, it's just like the whole thing. People forget. Oh, well let's go back to phase three. When we had the Russo brothers leading everything. Do you remember they got civil war basically off of the paintball episode on community? Like <laughs> Marvel saw them do that and said, Hey, let's mm -hmm. go ahead and let's have these guys that are having a great time on community who we're genius enough that there are speaking of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice is coming out. There's a, there's a long running Beetlejuice joke in the series that people didn't pick up on until afterward. Mm -hmm. And, and these guys were geniuses, but they were doing stuff like community. They didn't say, Oh, well, they're, they're just comedy guys. Let's not let them do a big superhero film. They're going to give them too many characters. And they're going to mess it up. No, they told a good story. Let them tell a good story. Mm -hmm. Marcus and McFeely, the Russo brothers, James Gunn, um, you have all of these individuals that, that were given freedoms, but were also had some reins on them. And, and yes, they weren't the, guardians. Volume three had a bigger budget than guardians. Volume one. That was in essence because what James Gunn proved himself, make these smaller budgets, mm -hmm. give them a better chance. Let them, let them succeed. I get it. Dr. Strange did well. Multiverse of madness. Wasn't that great. Um, I still loved it, but just to just to say, why do we have to have all women? Because the comic books had all women women stories. Like sometimes women like to work together. Like come on, like it's it's a thing. And of course, what better what better way to have Kamala Khan enter into the MCU and the theatrical version than for her to meet her hero? Mm -hmm. Because she's a huge Carol Danvers fan, and it makes perfect sense. It was a story that led into three different storylines. But okay, I'm done. I'm done. I just. <laughs> yeah right man if anybody yeah. so so if you're if you're still wondering if you still are questioning whether or not i'm for nelson pelts having anything to do with the disney board clearly yes, not <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm gonna go out on a limb here i think you're against it i it just it just drives me it's if, if there's anything that anybody could take away from this episode is this our world is bigger than our backyard just because you don't see it in your neighborhood does not mean it doesn't exist. Exactly. There are things going on around the world that you have no idea that are going on. And movies are the gateway for you to see the world in a bigger picture. 
And if we fail to do that, if we if we continue to whitewash stories and we continue to avoid um, having different cultures and different people groups of different orientations, religions, and everything else be represented, we're never going to know what the world is really like, and we'll be the ones that are considered, you know, closed-minded, pig-headed, and prejudiced. Yeah, and the only way those products are going to be good is if you allow an, an authentic, creative voice to be involved in every one of the aspects of the creation. Specifically meaning if you're going for that type of, I don't want to say outreach, but that type of, of, of authenticity in telling the story based on other people's cultures, you've got to have those cultures involved because otherwise it's going to sound like, well, you know what it sounds like to me? You know what they're going to think when they see it? They're going to say, oh, this sounds like it, it, somebody wrote a story when they think what it's like to be a Native American. And exactly. It'll inst and it'll get panned. And, so, and, yeah. and you'll, have, you'll have things like uh, Vasquez from Aliens that wasn't even represented by a Spanish person at all. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they, you've got you know, tan face and, and black face and everything else. Um, what, what I think is funny is when we, we come from comic book stories and comic book, comic book origins, one of the things you never hear about is, oh, the comics are, are in shambles because this storyline stunk. And listen, people love Spider-Man. But a very recent Spider-Man storyline was hated amongst mm -hmm. Spider-Man lovers. And they didn't go and say Spider-Man is trash. They just said this run of Spider-Man is trash. I didn't like it. But guess what? They still accepted it as part of the canon because they have no control over that. They just were very vocal about their, their dislike for it. And, and at the same time, these movies are not going to always be for everyone. I almost feel like it's you have to have this concept. And if you've never been in a comic book shop and you're a fan of Marvel because of the movies, I love you for it. You're welcome. You were a, a true fan. But I want to give you a little bit of a hint. If you've ever gone into a comic book shop and you've ever been, um, you know, and, and this is even speaking from I didn't do this until I was an adult, you can get a box at the comic book shop where you sign up for certain subscriptions and they will get them delivered and they will bring them to you. So new comic book day, everything is already ready for you. And sometimes what they'll do is they'll say, oh, you like this story. We're going to throw this book in there. And so you can decide whether you want that book or not. And sometimes you'll read that first issue and you'll take it home and be like, I don't want any more of this. And you go back to the shop and say, I'm not interested. But what you don't go back in the shop is say is this character is terrible and horrible. And this is what's going on. I'm like, no, mm -hmm. you just unsubscribe. We're getting to the point now where, where Marvel movies are going to tell a big story, but they're going to be independent stories of themselves. And yeah, it's not going to be phases one through three anymore, but for those of us who are willing to jump on and, and be the shill, we'll absorb it and we'll commentate it for you. But if you don't want a part of it, that's okay. It's mm -hmm. all right. You don't have to like it. You didn't like the Marvels? It's okay. I may not understand, I may not understand your opinion, but it's a no, it's a valid opinion. Let me tell you, so there are not to. there are not a lot of I mean, there are there a lot of people have a lot of of opinions about Thor Love and Thunder, right? But one of the things that no matter what that I really respect in the storyline that they told is that we saw the story of two people in parallel lives, meaning they were gaining power from a magical uh, object mm -hmm. and it was killing them. And what yeah. did they do with that power Mm -hmm. Once they had it. Now, one of them was influenced, obviously, by a very dark and evil object. So, eh, kind of, you can kind of say, oh, do, you know, did Gore really, really want this to drive? But, you know, I think it was just a perfect matching, like a Ven Venom symbiote with any Plus, I mean, the Necrosword, I feel like it, it played on that. Mm -hmm. like, it, yeah, it, it, it fed it, into it. it. That's why it called to him. What did he, what, what was his goal? He wanted to, he wanted to kill all of the gods. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it took a god to remind him See, that I wish mean, could be used for something so much better than what you're intending it to be. And now that I just remind you just reminded me, both of the magical objects also called to the people. So there are these good, well thought out beats in these stories. And, and it's yeah. present in every one of them. You know, even there are certain elements that I still enjoy from Thor the Dark World. I know yeah. controversial. So, you know, it's... 
everything's not going to be for everybody, but there is something that can be appreciated in almost anything, unless it's a Sony Spider Verse movie. <laughs> Actually, I got to tell you something. Those Venom movies are so wonderfully ton tongue in cheek. I love it. Like I I'm think sorry. My favorite, one of my favorite Marvel lines is from, from Venom, the first Venom. Mm. And it's, and it's the whole thing where he's like, he'll, he'll, he'll eat his arms and his legs and he'll just be rolling down the, the sidewalk, like a turd in the wind. Like, like, like for, for him to say, like, it just, it, that did everything for me. But my, it, my, my favorite moment comes from Venom 2 where venom is just like telling eddie you know this is it i mean i'm and i'm i'm very paraphrasing here but basically he's like yeah come on let's go let's kick his ass let's kill him and the minute he sees venom it's like oh crap it's one of the red ones see ya <laughs> or, or <laughs> let's get or, out of or, here what, what i love was when cletus was getting was about to get married and they had the priest there and venom shows up and you've got carnage pop up and it's like, I'm going to kill you, father. And the priest is like, oh, not you, father. You, father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, we could probably, you know, uh, so, well, the Straw Hat Goofy does a, a series now called um, uh, Saying Something Nice to ba About Bad Films. I, I don't know exactly what it's titled right now. But, it, and he, he did a couple different things. I think he did uh, Love and Thunder. And he realized he liked more about Love and Thunder than he thought he would it's kind of the same thing with the venom movies as much as as much mm -hmm. as i could cr critique them a lot there are some fun parts in those films yeah and that's what makes me go back and want to watch them so regardless you know um with that said we have been going for an hour and 60 minutes and i'm i'm gonna, I'm gonna say 99 viewers whoever you guys are i love you for it Thank you so much. A couple of things I want to remind you about before we end the show tonight. Um, there are some things that I would love for you to go and check out. Also, since X-Men 97, let me also say this. Um, we get a small cut. If you follow this link to, um, to lego.com and um, purchase the X-Men X-Jet, um, this comes with Rogue, um, Magneto, and a couple other things. Um, we get a little bit of credit for that. So would love to see you guys uh, check that out. If you're on the, on the fence about buying it, absolutely go for it um on top of that make sure you check out uh will wilkins um on netheads i'm sometimes there um i'm usually the understudy for trend when trend is not available um but we're both you know bearded uh bearded guys that like to wear hats and i just need to get you to wear dude, glasses so. and then you'll fit yeah. right into my king <clears throat> well i've got a pair of 3d glasses without the without the actual lenses in it so i'll have to wear them for the next episode um also make sure you check out our merch store it helps keep the lights on uh we you know we don't make a lot off of it, but it's just an opportunity for you to have merch. And again, that merch is pretty amazing. I can tell you because I bought some myself um, and you can definitely check that out there. Um, be sure to give us any opinions or thoughts or things that you would like to see on Nerd Initiative by following that QR code and the contact us on the website. Um, also, make sure you to check out for New Comic Book Day every Wednesday. Um, there are tons of articles on there. Not only do we have uh, New Comic Book Day stuff, but you can also get movie reviews, um, streaming reviews, everything else like that. Um, lots of lots of great content coming out of the Nerd Initiative website. You can definitely check that out there. Um, I will tell you right now, um, I actually wrote an article for the first time in a while. Uh, that will be available April 1st. Um, uh, I'm not, I can't say much about it, but I was uh, I'll give an opportunity to do, do a streamer for a horror film, um, mm. which was not terrible. So I will, I will let you uh, look at that on April 1st. Um, be sure to check out Turn a Page every Tuesday night um, at, uh, what is it, 8 p.m.? Does it say 8 p.m.? 8 p.m.? I believe it's 8 p.m. Or, yeah. Um, I, so it out, follow so, you. Hmm. I always forget. I always forget the times on stuff. I, I sometimes forget the times for this stuff. Add it to um, the graphic. Was that? I said, add it to the graphic. I'll have to remember to do that. Um, <laughs> but you can also check out wrestling night live 8 PM every Thursday night. That one's on the actual text, which is fantastic. Um, and if you are, if you are teetering on, uh, let me just challenge this. You guys are watching. If you are teetering on the idea of either getting into or getting back into wrestling, I recommend you watch Wrestling Night Live. Just hearing Rich get excited about what's going on, and and because he's worked in he's worked in the industry, he's done stuff. He's going to be at WrestleMania. Um, he will make you want to watch wrestling again. And he, I, I watched my first like main event stuff with Royal Rumble because I wanted to get into it because of just watching some of his show. 
I wanted to get back into it. I'm a kid who was in the 90s watching WCW, watching the NWO stuff. So um, it's been definitely interesting getting back into it. Highly recommend it. Um, you won't you won't regret it. Um, but with that said, um, Will, thank you again for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you all of you for watching. Um, mm -hmm. Be sure if you, and if you're, if you're listening to this, because if you don't know, um, we also run this as an audio podcast. So unfortunately a lot of people that are listening to this don't get to see the pictures, but you can always go back to the YouTube and watch the pictures later. Um, we, we really appreciate you guys listening and watching with us. Um, some of you for, for actually being in the chat. Um, we'll be back again in two weeks. We do this every other Friday. Mm -hmm. um, and just remember, regardless of what your fandom is, um, how you got into it or how long you've been a fan, you are a real fan and don't let anyone 